narcissistic behavior healthy versus unhealthy. Everybody has narcissistic traits. Those are the traits of pride, vanity, showcasing, anger, envy, and others besides. They are present in everybody, although some people have more narcissistic traits than others and stronger ones compared to other people. There is also the interaction with your empathic traits which have to be taken into account. We, as narcissists, we don't have any empathic traits. We can create the impression of them through cognitive empathy, but we don't actually have those empathic traits to keep in check the narcissistic ones. Anybody who is an empath, anybody who is normal, anybody who is narcissistic, and anybody who is a narcissist, all have narcissistic traits. And those traits can manifest in healthy or unhealthy ways. How is it that that manifestation can occur? Well, it relates to the presence of emotional empathy and those empathic traits. Imagine, if you will, that the narcissistic traits are like lava, churning away beneath a surface. What is that surface? Well, when it comes to non-narcissists, that surface is a thick crust of empathic traits. They keep the narcissistic traits in check, ensuring that they don't come to the fore. But in certain instances, they can be utilized, regulated within emotional empathy, so that the narcissistic traits are allowed to appear, but they are still encased by emotional empathy and empathic traits, so that the narcissistic traits are harnessed in a way which is healthy. So they are allowed to manifest, but they are still kept on the reins of emotional empathy, kept within the empathic traits. The contrast is where narcissistic traits are given free reign. There is nothing holding them in place. There is no emotional empathy curtailing their usage or diminishing it or eradicating it. There are no empathic traits holding in place the narcissistic ones. And of course, that invariably is manifested by us as narcissists. There are essentially three states where narcissistic traits will come to the fore, but their application will vary as to whether they are healthy or unhealthy. The instance where they come to the fore and it is unhealthy is where there is nothing keeping them in check at all, other than the need for control. And this is the narcissist that we are talking about. And so, there is no emotional empathy, but there might be cognitive empathy. There might be the facade. There might be the bronze period, which is keeping those narcissistic traits in check for the purposes of gaining what the narcissist requires. More usually, those narcissistic traits operate with free reign, so that you see the narcissist behaving in a jealous or envious way, showcasing, being vain, being argumentative, and all of the various manipulations that come associated with that. So, for example, envy might manifest as triangulation, showcasing as grandiosity, argumentativeness as a circular conversation. The second instance where narcissistic traits come to the fore is as a consequence of there being an erosion of the emotional empathy of an individual. So, where an external stressor has caused this, the emotional empathy and the empathic traits associated with that emotional empathy are reduced, allowing the narcissistic traits to come forward. This, for instance, might be a victim of the narcissist, so that the abuse has eroded that individual's emotional empathy, 
so that they lash out with anger and shout and scream at the narcissist or perhaps physically assault them. The behavior in itself is unpleasant. However, there is a justification because it's directed towards the protagonist who has caused the reduction of the emotional empathy. And that shell, that crust of emotional empathy and the empathic traits, temporarily, and that's the important point, temporarily reduces, allowing that relevant narcissistic trait or traits to come to the fore. And if you want to understand more about that, how that occurs with regard to empathic people, please go to the Knowledge Vault and obtain Why Am I Behaving Like the Narcissist? Many times people consult with me and say, HG, am I the narcissist? I think my behavior accords with what you describe as narcissist doing. And in those instances, what is occurring is there is a reduction of the emotional empathy occasioned by an external stressor. When it comes to dealing with a narcissist, this is usually abuse, but it can be other things as well. And therefore, the tide that is the emotional empathy recedes, leaving behind the rocks of the narcissistic traits and the behavior associated with it. But it is not a permanent state of affairs. As the stressor reduces or is removed, the emotional empathy flows back and regulates the behavior once again. The third instance is where narcissistic traits appear, but they are still shrouded, encased, regulated, if you will, by the emotional empathy, by the empathic traits. And that is what you would understand as healthy narcissism, or, as I would prefer, a healthy narcissistic trait. I prefer to talk about narcissism as being what a narcissist has, and therefore, if you're not a narcissist, you don't have narcissism, you have narcissistic traits. Hence, this is about narcissistic behavior, the narcissistic traits, healthy as against unhealthy. So what might an example of this look like to aid your understanding? Well, let's take somebody who has the narcissistic trait of pride and is an empath. This individual takes pride in her appearance. She goes to the gym to keep fit. She wears, she wears good clothing and spends uh, a reasonable amount of money on them to look good. She purchases makeup, various lotions and potions to keep the skin supple and glowing, etc. She eats in a healthy way. All of those behaviours are about her looking good and feeling good and cater to the narcissistic trait of pride, taking pride in one's appearance, and also vanity. However, because this individual is an empath and operates within that casing of emotional empathy, all of those behaviours are not problematic to those around her. She attends the gym when she has time to do so. She buys the various lotions and potions and makeup and clothing, and she can afford to do it. The food that she eats, she doesn't insist that anybody else eats it, and allows them to choose what they would want to eat, say within the family. She might recommend that they eat healthily, but she doesn't impose it upon them as she recognises the boundary between their choices and hers, and her natural emotional empathy ensures that she is not overbearing about the subject. Accordingly, those narcissistic traits of pride and vanity, in terms of her looking good, attending the gym, buying the clothing, makeup, etc., eating healthily, are kept in check by her emotional empathy and her empathic traits of compassion for other people decency with regard to behaving towards them. But what about the narcissist? What about the narcissist who similarly has those traits of pride and vanity, but there is no emotional empathy to keep it in check? In that instance, the narcissist goes to the gym as and when she chooses, and if that means that she misses her daughter's piano recital for the Christmas play, so be it. She comes first. She has no emotional empathy for her daughter, and therefore decides, well, sorry, mummy can't be there, and makes an excuse. It might be that she can't afford all the various lotions and potions, etc., and therefore is using the household budget on these things when she ought not to. Certain narcissists would steal to obtain these things, borrow money to buy them and not pay the money back. 
max out the credit cards without due consideration for the strain that is putting on the household budget. With regard to the healthy eating, they may become dictatorial about it, insisting that the entire family adopts the same eating habits, uh, imposing it on children, for instance, and their, their spouse, even though they don't necessarily need to do it and certainly don't want to do it. There's no consideration for how it impacts upon them. So healthy narcissistic traits exist, and they are operated within that shell of emotional empathy and empathic traits. So in effect, they don't cause a problem for other people. Where they might, and this is pointed out to the individual, they'll respond with emotional empathy, recognizing that it's causing a difficulty and adjust their behavior. It doesn't feel like a threat to control to them. Whereas with the narcissist, not only will they operate with a sense of entitlement, no boundary recognition, a lack of accountability, and of course a lack of emotional empathy, when it's pointed out to them, for instance, you're spending far too much on makeup, and this is meaning that the kids are having to go without their new shoes, the reaction of the narcissist is one whereby that is challenge fuel, threatens the narcissist's control, and it will, there will be a response with such as, they don't need shoes, dismissive, or what, they've grown out of them already, well, just get them a cheaper pair, or you sort it out, they're your children too, why should I be expected to deal with everything? Blame shifting and a variety of potential other manipulations, which I'm sure that you can imagine. So ultimately, when it comes to the question of narcissistic behavior, and where it's healthy is against unhealthy, with those who have emotional empathy and empathic traits, it regulates those traits, which are narcissistic, so that they can be utilized, but not in an inappropriate fashion. Take, for example, those in the acting profession or the performing arts, they will have strong narcissistic traits. They need to. They need to be able to showcase, um, get in front of a camera or go up on a stage. And of course, many within the acting and performing arts are narcissists or are narcissistic. But there are also plenty of normal and empathic people there as well. What happens is that their narcissistic traits come to the fore to allow them to perform the role and then off stage, away from the camera, they may be quite introverted and quiet individuals because their narcissistic traits are naturally dampened down, kept within check by their empathic traits and their emotional empathy when they are away from that certain situation. Similarly, you may know somebody who is one of the kindest and most pleasant people that you could ever meet, but turns into a ball-crushing bastard at work. That is because that individual is able to put a different hat on, which reduces their emotional empathy but doesn't completely extinguish it, but causes the individual to behave in a way which is different within the workplace to, say, when they are with family and friends. Again, that individual has narcissistic traits, for instance, pride within their work, and that comes to the fore meaning that they push people harder, not unfairly, but harder, whereas outside of work, that doesn't apply, and therefore they are more relaxed, and more engaging. And so an empathic or normal individual will behave in a different way. Of course, a narcissist can be a ball-crushing bastard at work, and seemingly very pleasant outside of work, but that's the operation of the facade, and done through different methods of control. And of course, there will be other indicators which enable you to realize that there is unhealthy narcissism at work as opposed to it being healthy narcissistic traits. Those are essentially the differences to enable you to understand the difference of healthy as against unhealthy narcissistic behaviors. And of course, if you need any further assistance in unraveling this, you can utilize the NARC detector to determine whether somebody's a narcissist, so you can then look at the prism of their behavior, or rather look at their behavior through that relevant prism, and you of course can consult with me using the audio and email consultations. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.